Hello and welcome back to Seaside Garth. It's been a while since I did a crank no start video, but now I got the opportunity. Nissan Micra, you might recognize it from the channel earlier. I did a test video of this car a couple of years back. It belongs to my sister. It doesn't want to start. So uh, I hope to be able to kick some life back into this. In my mind, this thing is pretty much impossible to kill except for rust and rust is slowly killing this off but the mechanical stuff are normally very bulletproof on this and i'm actually a little bit surprised that it doesn't want to start but it has been a cheap car for my sister to own so far we bought it cheap and it has pretty much just worked ever since i have done some rust work on it before but but the mechanical bits are just working 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 so it was just delivered here five minutes ago and I pushed it in, as you saw. I'm a bit <laughs> exhausted still. Let's see if it runs. It's actually trying. Okay, so it spins pretty fast. It is trying to catch, uh, but it doesn't really want to go. I did try a couple of times just to make sure that I could hear the fuel pump, for instance. It is running. Whew. I can smell on the exhaust that it did have some, that it also did fire a bit. Take a look at this 1.3, no, 1.0, I think, Nissan Micra engine. These cars, the 90s, the, the, the Japanese cars from the 90s, Master, N Nissan and uh, Toyota. It's just the cockroaches of, uh, of the car industry. If you can keep rust away from them, they will just work, work, work. And look at this, this is an old car. It got 250,000 kilometers on the clock. And it's bone dry, it's not leaking from anywhere, it's just... Uh, you see this all the time on these kinds of engines from, uh, from that era and from that part of the world. If it was French, it would just be completely drenched in oil everywhere and not rusty at the front end at least. But uh, the Japanese cars, they are just, <laughs> just bone dry. Now where to begin on a problem like this? Normally I would check for spark, but I won't do that as the first thing today because I'm pretty sure we got spark at least on one cylinder because it is wanting to start it just doesn't really want to catch and my first thing uh, my first thought is that we got a flooded engine the thing about that is that this has been a no starter for at least three days and it has been attempted a couple of times so i would expect it to uh, i would expect the fuel to leak past the rings overnight and then be ready to start the day after of course diluting the oil and all that but uh, doesn't smell like fuel down there so I don't really know but I have a feeling that could be the case so I'm wondering where the fuel pump relay or uh, fuse is it's a bit difficult to see anything on this one uh, so it's not, not so it's not, not any of these uh, And right now I'm just going by hunch, by the feeling that I have that it's flooded. So I want to disconnect either the fuel, uh, disconnect the fuel pump by removing the relay and then crank and see if it changes anything just to clear out the engine and make sure that it's not just flooding itself completely. Because maybe that's just the, the problem. Either that, or it is getting too little fuel. Huh? Not the fuel pump relay was supposed to be in here. But I saw on YouTube that it's supposed to be right there. I was cheated. I wonder if it's on the other side then. Let's just give it a go before I start Googling.
Nope, no relay either. Ah, oh, maybe I can just find the fuse. Fuel pump! It's this right there. That is out. With that removed, the fuel pump should no longer run, of course. Let's just check. Nope, I can't hear the fuel pump, so let's just try to crank it for a bit. It's definitely flooded. It's got a lot of fuel in there still. I'm just trying to clear it out now. And now stop doing that. <laughs> Let's just try to put in the fuse once again. Like that. Then crank it. Now I can hear the fuel pump. Nah. Come on. It is so close to catching. Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna remove the fuse again because I don't want to flood the engine completely while trying to make it run. And now I'm just gonna check for spark on all cylinders because I'm a bit puzzled otherwise uh, what this could be caused by. But if it's only sparking on, on one, one for instance, then of course that would be a problem. So I'm just going to check that to rule that out. Let's check that. I'm just going to switch off the light because it would be easier to see. And then we're going to look for a flash in that one. It's just starting, which is really weird. Uh, it's no, <laughs> there's definitely something wrong. Well, th but there was a spark on that one. Currently, we don't have a fuel pump engaged, so it started because it was no longer flooded, most likely. Could the pl plugs be foul completely and flooded? Is that the, uh, the problem we are having? Maybe it's just a matter of removing the plugs cleaning them up and then it will run. I'm just going to check for spark on the next one. A couple of, yeah, I could, should of course check all of them, but if these two are, yeah, yeah, it's sparking also. I think I'm going to go classic on this and just remove spark plugs, cleaning them up and then yeah, that could be the, the only issue. It's, it would be pretty basic, but sometimes it is basic. And to be honest, I'm expecting basic on this engine. They are definitely not great looking spark plugs. I'm just going to remove all of them just to compare and see if there is something scary looking. I might add my brother-in-law was concerned that it could be compression issues. But I am really, of course it's possible, but it's just so weird to go from, from a perfect running car one day to a no starter the next day uh, if it's compression issues. Wow, this is really flooded though. I wonder if we have no spark on cylinder number three on the spark plug. It looks very different than the one that I just took out. These are really used spark plugs, that's, that's for sure. Yeah. But I think it's just very fuelish. But take a look at the amount of crap down there. So I think I'm just going to clean these up. Uh, ideally it would be to just swap them with some new ones because they are really bad. Because they're really looking quite bad. Yeah, I'm just going to clean them up because if it starts then then we know that it's just a matter of changing the plugs because they will probably be bad pretty quickly again. And then 
try to put them back in. But before putting them back in, I'm just going to crank the engine over without spark plugs in, because I still have a feeling that we got a flooded engine. And that will clear the uh, cylinders completely of, uh, of fuel, because remember, the pump is not running. So there we go. Now it's definitely clean for fuel. So I can go ahead and install those back plugs again. And I'm going to insert the fuel pump fuse. And then I'm going to crank it. And if it starts, I think it has been flooded and that the spark box has been fouled quite badly and needs changing to avoid it in the future, I'd say. But let's see if I'm that lucky. We are not running on all four right now, we are running on three. But it is running. You know what? I'm gonna go ahead and go and buy some new spark plugs for this car. I think the spark plugs is the issue. The uh, leads could also be changed maybe, but uh, I actually think I did that not that long ago. Uh, but the spark plugs I think they are fouled. So back from the shops, and I have just talked a lot to you guys and installed brand new spark plugs, talked about SAT 900 turbos and very exciting stuff, but I forgot to hit record, so sorry about that, but I have installed four new spark plugs, and it's now time to start it up and see if it makes any kind of difference. Yeah, the, in short, what I was talking about is that I tend to overlook spark plugs. They rarely there's, there's rarely anything wrong with them, and I do know they wear out, but it's just so so rare. So it's nice to experience such a big problem that this seems to have caused by spark plugs. I think it's a mix of a flooded situation. Maybe my sister started the car and it cut out or something like that. That way it will have a lot of fuel in the engine still. Then when you try to start it again, it will squirt even more fuel in, then it will flood. And if the spark plugs also are very fouled and bad, then it will be become an issue. But now I have changed these. I hope it will run. And I hope it will run better than just before, because before it was running, but I think it was running on three. I expect it to sound like a sewing machine now, like it normally does. Let's try. Oh, ho, 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 yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay, the improvement that spark plugs made on this engine is amazing. Uh, I think I'm going to try to cut in the, uh, the engine culture just before with the old spark plugs. And then this. This is amazing. It runs really nice. I'm just going to rev it a bit. Sounds perfect. Absolutely perfect. There we go. The no start issue on, on the Micra was caused by, I think, a mix of the flooding, but mainly bad spark plugs. They were really looking bad. I can't really show you because I did clean them up, as you saw just before, but they were really black and sooty down there. And now with the new spark plugs, it just runs perfectly. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to fire it up, and if it still runs just fine, then I would call this uh, fixed. I love these kinds of jobs, and I, it's also fun to make videos about, because I don't know the uh, result, I don't know where to go, and I don't know what will be, how involved the job will be. This was qu quite uh, simple, and I was expecting simple, because these engines, they are extremely reliable. And the problem with that is that I sometimes neglect to service engines like these because they just works all the time. So maybe I never changed the spark plugs. And I, I, can, I honestly can't remember if I ever changed it on this one. And I think my sister has driven a lot of kilometers in this car and had it for, for, for quite a few years now. So yeah, 
Thanks for watching. Don't forget you can support me on Patreon. There's a link down below. And see you in the next one.